Hello and welcome to Baited Gaming. My name is Joe and today we're going to continue our playthrough of Fantasy Star 4 for the Sega Genesis. This is episode number 5. Uh, so in the last episode, we acquired our spaceship, took a flight to another planet, crash landed our spaceship, grabbed another spaceship, got into fight with some god entity, big black blob dark force thing, and now we are on our way back to the planet of Dizolus in order to try and figure out what is the cause of this brutal snowstorm that's been going on. So we've just loaded up the ice digger into our inventory and we're going to head over to Dizolus and see what other things we can do. Okay, so we're going to head over there. So now this session is probably going to have a little bit of grinding involved in it because we're going to be coming up to a dungeon called the Air Castle. And the Air Castle is one of the most infamous, famous, whatever you want, dungeons you want to call it in this game. Uh, as it requires usually to be about level 24, 25 in order to do so. That's not what you want. So we're going to hop into the Ice Digger right now and we are going to head up north. And the good thing about being in a vehicle is that most of the encounters you can run from pretty much instantly. So we'll be running from pretty much everything. Alright, we're going to make a quick stop in the town of Zosa real quick, just for teleport purposes. And then back out into the ice digger. And we're going to continue heading north uh, to a cave. Now in this particular cave is a weapon upgrade for Rika. And also, this is the site of where we're going to be doing some grinding, so we're going to do a quick safety save here because this dungeon can get a little hectic. So we're going to make a quick macro. We're going to have that, that, nope, yes. Okay, so this is basically going to be like our AoE setup. We're going to set one more up with Hewn as the starter. Okay, so we should be good to go. We're going to reorder the party. We're going to put Raja on the front because we want him to pretty much take most of the hits. Because he will be sapping EXP away from us if, uh, if left unattended. And we are going to grab all the chests in this dungeon here because they have pretty good stuff. Uh, Trimate, which is the equivalent of a Nares, which is the third tier of spell. And there should be another chest in here. Alright, so yeah, we're going to get ambushed a lot in this place, and hopefully they stop targeting Rika, because we need her alive. Okay, that's good. Three for three on Rika. Okay. Good. Good stuff. So this is why we did the little save outside. Just in case something like this happened. Okay. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and res the dead and continue along. So the objective of what we're doing right now is uh, we need to be a high enough level in order to fight these triplets who are a bit of a uh, kind of a block. Uh, they're like the first level check that you're going to find in the game. So there's a Stardew. Stardew's pretty important. I don't know why we're getting single encounters here. Alright, there's a level for Rika. Now the triplets have the dubious distinction of being known as one of the most difficult fights in the game just because of uh, how much AoE damage they can do with spells. And Raja is dead again, which is fine. We're going to go up and talk to these cats. So these muscats, they are the guardians of the valley or or something of that nature and they get a good feeling from us so they're gonna they're gonna provide us with a weapon that'll help us uh, 
with fighting Dark Force or just everything in general. So we'll go and we're gonna talk to this big old cat guy up here. Okay, so he's gonna pass down a treasure to us called the Silver Tusk. We're gonna go ahead and equip that onto Rika. Okay. And then we're gonna head back and continue getting some EXP. Okay, so we're gonna have Rune recover Raja. It's nice to have Raja up just so we can waste his TP as the one healing. Okay, and then we're gonna keep we'll walk back out of here and continue grinding. Perfect. It's about time we got a good encounter. So let's hope that we don't get triple targeted on Rika. Uh, red is fine. Perfect. Good chunk of EXP there. Right, we're just going to keep walking around this cave for a while. Ouch. And down goes Raja. Got uh, Nefoy for Rune, which is a good upgrade for him. And we'll have. We could give everyone some healing. Okay. And continue along. Not really much to be said for this part of the game. Every RPG has its spots where you're going to end up grinding for a little bit. This just. We try to limit them in this game as much as possible, but. The air castle is such a big old block that you just need to have a certain amount of EXP. Oh, looks like the cats are fighting. That's good. That's what you want. And Rika's down. And Chaz is down. Thank you, Owls. I appreciate that. You know, the two people that I really needed EXP on. You just go ahead and kill them. Here we're gonna heal them up using Sar. Alright. And keep going. Getting ambushed a lot in here. And that's okay. We are going to get out of here. We're going to go heal up over at the spaceport in Tyler. Okay, and we're going to teleport back over to Zosa. Hop in the ice digger. So crazy cats behind me just won't stop trying to fight each other. Crazy kitties. Okay. And let's fight. And Roger down. Jocker.
Okay, so Chaz got a level. Got three more to go. Goodness gracious, that's hit so hard. Okay, just keep on grinding. This will also help because we're going to need a, quite a bit of money coming up in the next shopping area because we got quite a few things to buy. We're going to get a sword for Chaz, we got to get two sets of armor, and they are not cheap. Okay, there's Rika's level. Rika is level 23, so she's got one level to go. does again. Hey, that's enough. That's what you want. Alright, so I'm just going to heal everyone up and just continue the grind. Not really much to say here, unfortunately. There we go, level for Chaz. Two more to go. So let's heal up. Now we could grind at the air castle itself, but the monsters there give a little bit less EXP and they're a little more dangerous, as if these ones weren't dangerous enough. It looks like the wrong macro there. So now we're gonna have to wait for everyone to just look at this one and be like, yo, I ain't got no you left. Okay. 
Okay, so there's Rika's level. That brings her to 24. Now we just gotta get the last two for Chaz. So they can kill Rika off now. Well, we're gonna change the macro a little bit. We're gonna do regular Groff instead. That should be better. Oh, that's. I didn't even know they can cast that. Well, at least I have my coffee to make this a little more entertaining. We're gonna gain a level. Okay, Jeff's gonna heal himself up. Ren's gonna heal himself. Alright, it's 23. One more level to go. to make sure I have enough TP left over to be able to teleport out of here and back to the safe area. Let's check status here. We need about 8,000 EXP, so it should be about 3-4 encounters, if you can stay alive. Okay, that was a good chunk of EXP, 2266. Let's check, see how much further. Alright, 4420. So, two, three more battles and we should be out of here. Tandle already? Jeez. I guess Rune has not died very much in this campaign so far. So I guess it makes sense. This should be the last fight pending Chaz lives. Well, that's not. That doesn't bode well. Okay. That's good. Thank you, game. All right, now I'm gonna have to run out. Thank you, game. Almost done.
There we go, this should do it. Come on, just live. Oh god, leave him alone. No, I crit him. Oh my god. This game is just determined to not let me level him. Try this again. One more encounter. cool thing about the movement in this game is if you bounce off walls, you can continue holding the direction you're going and you'll just kind of glide up the wall. Okay, alright, we are out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, so now we're going to teleport over to the city of Zosa. But before we walk inside, we're going to take off all of Raja's stuff because we are going to be saying goodbye to him at this point. He's going to suddenly come down with a fever of sorts, if I remember correctly. Is it this one? No, this isn't the place. It must be a different town. Yeah, it's a different town. Oh, that's right, we gotta go to Mies. That's right. Okay, so we're gonna hop back in the ice digger. That's not the one. There's it. There it is. So this is the town of Mies. And if you talk to the townspeople here, they'll tell you that some sort of fever slash plague is going on here. As we're going to find out from this person. So apparently some strange illness has come out since the Gruber Tower appeared. And then all of a sudden Raja is going to collapse on the ground. And he's going to be put into bed and we're gonna see him at the end of the game so apparently Rune and Rika feel the black energy wave still from Dark Force and that it's coming from the Gruber Tower so now that we, we've finally determined the cause of this snowstorm is in fact the Gruber Tower like Raja said all along and now some of these, one of these espers come flying in saying that uh, one of their group members has gone charging at the grouper tower and she needs help. Um, the thing about the grouper tower is that there is a forest of trees, like living trees surrounding it and you cannot get through it uh, as I'll show you coming up. So we're gonna go try and save this person from these carnivorous trees. So we're going to head out of the town. Hop in our ice digger. So we can avoid encounters. And we're going to head northeast to the Gruber Tower. So right here is where all the carnivorous trees are. So we're going to hop in this and get a little cutscene. So we can see Kyra getting attacked by these trees. Now, you're not meant to win this encounter. Um, if you kill one of the faces of the tree, they just respawn. So you're, we're just going to run away. And that'll trigger the next cutscene. So we pull Kyra out and um, she's going to join our group. So we're going to figure out that the Gruber Tower is what we need to do in order to set this planet back right. So. Kyra is what's called an Esper, and all the Espers train at the Esper Mansion in the southeastern part of the Dizolus. Uh, his name is Lutz. So apparently he's this magician that's over 2,000 years old, and along with the original Elise, saved the Algo Solar System. So this is going back to the first game, 
where they're kind of throwing it back. They're dealing in the timeline here. So apparently this this Lutz is still alive and living in the basement of the Esper Mansion. So Kyra thinks that if anyone knows what to do next and or how to save the planet, it would be Lutz. So why don't we go talk to him? So Ren doesn't believe that since he's an android, he just thinks logically that there's no way this, there's possibly a magician that could live, or a human that could live for over 2,000 years. So, we're going to head down to the Esper Mansion and go meet with this so-called Lutz. So, we're in our ice digger. We're going to head south. And we're going to just run from these encounters. And that's the wrong way. We're head back towards Mies and south. Okay, so through here. And up through this pile of ice, and into the Esper Mansion. So this is the Esper Mansion that's being guarded. So we're gonna walk up, and they recognize Kyra, so they're gonna let us in. Now, the Esper Mansion has some pretty fatty loots that we want to make sure to grab. Uh, they're in a couple of these rooms here. So we're gonna get a Soul Dew, ten thousand Meseda, a Reflect Robe, and a Laconian Rod from that room. And there's another room with four chests in it that we're gonna want, I believe. So let's check in here. I uh, know this is just beds. We don't want that. Okay. So we're going to keep heading north. And we're going to go to try and, and go into the inner sanctum of the Esper Mansion. So as you can see, it's being guarded by these two little idiots. So we're going to talk to them, and they're going to say that Kyra can't pass here without any permission. And they're going to get into a little argument, and then... Rune's going to speak up, saying, let her in! And for some reason, this guy recognizes Rune and apologizes to him and lets us in. So that's a little suspicious. So we're going to walk into the inner sanctum here and try and get an audience with this Lutz guy. So we're going to talk to this guy. Apparently, this old man recognizes Rune and knows him too, so something strange is going on here. So... This is the inner sanctuary, um, and in this room is Lutz's sanctuary itself. So we're going to go ahead and go downstairs and meet him. So everyone's a little curious as to what he could be. So we're going to head down, and unfortunately there's just a floating ball. There's nobody here. And so Kyra's calling out for him to show himself, but he's he's not here, so... And Rune informs him that Lutz has left this world a long, long time ago. And Ren confirms that there's no way that a human could live for over 2,000 years. And Kyra claims it's like, I saw him with my own eyes. We believe. I'm a believer. We all believe. We all believe in the legend of Lutz. And that he's leading us. And that's why we are trying so hard to do well. And he's just got to exist. So Rune tells her to calm down. And says that yes, while he may not be of this world anymore... His spirit does live on, and that's what that floating ball is. It's called a telepathy ball. So the previous Lutz, or the previous generation of Lutz, uh, they leave their will and spirit inside of these telepathy balls, and then when the proper person person shows themselves, they absorb those memories and it, the spirit and become Lutz and obtain all their memories. So, as you might have guessed from the last few minutes... Rune is that man, Rune Walsh, the fifth generation Lutz. So he gets all the memories and power that come with and the title and responsibility of being Lutz that he has to save the world. So he's going to tell the story of how every thousand years is a calamity that occurs in which heroes have to save the solar system because Dark Force gets resurrected every thousand years, and now that the planet of Parma has been destroyed, he may surface for good, because the planets are a sort of seal on this profound darkness of power. So we need to 
defeat Dark Force once and for all. And the only way to do that is by finding wherever he is and hunting him down. So Dark Force has yet to be defeated and Rune is going to choose Chaz as his champion to fight against the Profound Darkness. Um, he really, he, Ch uh, Rune's believed in Chaz the entire time, even though he's been sarcastic and petty with him. Uh, he knows that Chaz is a, a true warrior and a hero and will step up when need be. So now we need to head over to the Gruber Tower and this old man, I forget his name, but the old man tells us that if we get the Eclipse Torch, we should be able to destroy the trees surrounding the Gruber Tower. So we're going to go off to a place called the Gumbius Temple, which is to the west of here. Okay, so we are going to head out of the Esper Mansion. And we're going to do it the fast way by teleporting out. Oops. Okay. We're going to hop in our ice digger. And we are going to head west. Okay, should be just through here. And there it is. There's the temple, I believe. Okay, but that's about a half hour into this video, so not much excitement going on. Just a little bit of grinding and some story plot points uncovered. But we're going to go ahead and make a cut here and end this video for the day. Again, if you if you like what you see, leave a, a like, a comment, subscribe, and we'll definitely be putting out more videos in the future. So, again, this is Baited Gaming. My name's Joe. Have a good night.